Watch you guys got another video here for you. How much RAM do you really need? Now, if you're building a brand new PC, you're going to be going on the internet and you're going to see a lot of conflicting information about how much RAM you actually need for your PC build. That's going to come down to basically what you're actually doing on your computer. So I broke that down into three categories, casual user, intermediate user, and also professional user, gamer, come graphics designer. Now let's take a look at some of the more taxing things you can do on a computer, which is like graphic design, 3D modeling, intensive multitasking, uh, multimedia editing, and things like that of 4K and 8K resolution. Maybe you've got some high res video footage there and you're editing videos and you're using Adobe Premiere Pro or something like that. Then you may need to even start off with something like 32 gigabytes of RAM. And this will make the whole process a lot more smoother and easier to work with. Now, it's not to say that you can't edit videos with 16 gigabytes of RAM because you can, but depending on what type of content you're editing, if you're just doing some light edits at 1080p and things like that, you can probably get away with 16 gigabytes of RAM, no problem at all. But when you start going up the food chain, it gets a little bit more difficult. Now, it's always good to check the manufacturer's website for the software that you're using. This is Adobe Premiere Pro. You can see they're saying 8 gigabytes of RAM is minimum, 16 gigabytes for HD media, 32 gigabytes for 4K media or higher. Also, the GPU they're recommending minimum of 2 gigabytes of uh, VRAM and 4 gigabytes of VRAM for HD and 4K media. Now, of course, they have graphics cards with more VRAM than 4 gigabytes. Uh, so that is a bit of an older post. Also, monitor resolutions play a part here, 1920 by 1080 or greater for the 16 gig and 32 gigabytes of uh, RAM, which they're recommending. And that was posted in April 2018. So you can see here, these specifications are pretty old. Now, Adobe After Effects as well, uh, gives uh, some specifications here. Recommended 16 gigabytes of RAM. I would recommend way more than that for Adobe After Effects. Probably 32 gigabytes minimum. Now, what about gaming? Let's take a look at some gaming here. And that's a more difficult one to answer because there's so many different games out there that require different specifications to run them correctly. Now, Valorant is a very easy game to play uh, with a low-end spec system. And that's because it's been designed that way. And you can play games like CSGO with pretty low end specifications. And that's because it's an older game. But some of the more modern games are requiring 16 gigabytes of RAM, like Cyberpunk uh, 2077. Uh, the other one is Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is recommended that you use 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now, they'll probably tell you that it will run on lower specifications on their website. And I tend to ignore these minimal uh, sort of specifications because they're always wrong. It's like Microsoft saying that you can run Windows 10 with four gigabytes of RAM. It's just not possible. It's really unenjoyable. And look at Cyberpunk here. They're saying you can have 12 gigabytes of RAM running at 1440p ultra settings. And I can tell you it's going to be a pretty rough experience with just 12 gigabytes of RAM. Now, Global uh, Offensive, which is um, Counter-Strike, it says that you can run a minimum of two gigabytes of RAM. Now I tend to ignore all of these recommendations on the internet and I tend to go with my own recommendations, which are probably for 1080p gaming, I would generally go for a minimum of uh, eight gigabytes of RAM, but recommended, I would say 16 gigabytes of RAM in 2021. VRAM, I would say go with a minimum of four gigabytes of VRAM and try to aim for 60 frames per second minimum and that way you will have an enjoyable gaming experience. Now you can always check the performance of your memory here and how much is being used inside Windows, and this will give you a general idea of how much uh, of your memory is being utilized by Windows and games and other things. So you can generally work that out by looking inside here. And it just comes down to really what you're trying to do with your computer. And I'll explain a little bit about the reason why I put it into categories, because some people don't need uh, vast amounts of memory. This is 32 gigabytes of memory here, and uh, you can see how much CPU and disk space and all that sort of other stuff is being used inside here. Now, if you take a look at your browsing here, I've opened up 50 tabs of this web page here, and of course, some of these will be uh, put to sleep, so it's not using all of your 
resources. But you can see here is a little stutter here, here and there, and that's because we've got 50 uh, web pages open here, and still the memory is only uh, a little bit used here. It's not vast amounts, but so you can see how uh, powerful uh, systems are today in 2021. Now, normally when I build PCs nowadays, I generally put 16 gigabytes of RAM in. I do think that's the new sweet spot. I think we've moved on from eight gigabytes of RAM and I tend to put 16 gigabytes in. Now, if we look at this browser here, 50 browsers open. When I close this, you can see it will drop right away down here. Now, you can probably get away with eight gigabytes of RAM if you're just a casual user today. But I tend to build PCs and I put a minimum of 16 gigabytes of RAM in because I just feel that it just makes things a little bit more snappier. And of course, it gives them a little bit more room for doing other things. Now, if you're looking to buy a laptop or a PC, just look out for the amount of memory that's installed on that system. This one has four gigabytes of uh, RAM installed. And if that's running Windows 10, it's going to be pretty slow. Again, PCs like this one, very attractive to a lot of people. Eight gigabytes of RAM installed on this one. And you can see they're using just one memory stick in here, which means it's running on single channel instead of dual channel. Now, dual channel is a lot better than single channel, and you will end up having to go and buy uh, dual channel memory, which means two memory sticks, 16 gigabytes, stick them in, or eight gigabytes, you can have two four gigabyte sticks, and you'll get better performance running on dual channel than you will on single channel. Now, I've set a little graph here so you can see how I've worked it out. Casual user, you can see uh, internet browsing, email, in, uh, listening to music and watching videos. Eight gigabytes of RAM is recommended there. Now for intermediate users, which is internet browsing, email, word processing, spreadsheets, basic graphics programs, gaming, music and videos and multitasking, I've put 16 gigabytes of RAM in there. And for a pro gamer and graphic design, which is high performance gaming, 4K multimedia editing, streaming and graphic design, 3D modeling and other things like that. 32 gigabytes of RAM or more. Okay, so let's talk about monitors and GPUs. I see a lot of people making this mistake quite a bit and uh, it can be a bit confusing. So let's talk about uh, the small monitor on the left. If you're looking to play 1080p gaming, which is still very popular today in 2021, if you're looking to play 1080p gaming at 60 hertz, 75 hertz or 144 hertz, you don't need an RTX 3070. RTX 3080 or RTX 3090, or even one of the big high-end uh, AMD graphics cards. You don't need those. You can get away with a cheaper used card if that's what you want to buy, something like a 970 or 980, GTX 980, 970, 1060, 6 gigabyte. As long as you're going for 6 uh, gigabytes of VRAM or more, and you're going for something like a 1660 Super or a 1660 Ti or something like that, you'll be perfectly fine with that particular type of monitor. If you're looking to go up market and for going for a 4K monitor with a big high resolution, then you're going to need something like an 8 gigabytes VRAM or more uh, just to handle that particular type of monitor. Now, another thing you have to take into account is all of the settings inside the uh, game that you're playing. If you've got the settings up on Ultra and also all the textures are all the way up, and you've got shadows on, and also the effects in the game are on high. You've got anti-aliasing turned up and to the highest setting. Field of view set all the way up to the highest, so you can see further distances. All this is going to eat into your frames per second. Obviously, reduce the amount of frames per second you're going to get because you've turned up all the features in the game. So you can always turn those down a little bit. Shadows is another big one that eats into your frames per second. Now, some games will need to be uh, tweaked and turned down because some of the resources are too demanding for the GPU that you're using. And you can just turn some features off, which will obviously give you a few more frames per second back. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it. So I hope this one answers all your questions and helps you out. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I shall see you again for another video real soon. Just want to say a big shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. Thanks again for watching and thanks for your continued support. Bye for now.